men of Hellas, Greek heavy troopers from the Bronze Age to Byzantium. First up, we have a Mycenaean warlord, wears a Near Eastern styled tasseled tunic from extensive trade and cultural ties between Mycenae in the Near East, shoes or boots also common, and of course, he wears the Dendra armor, aka the layer cake of death. Pretty much full body protection, no arm guards here, though they were also available, all laced together. Kind of crude, but at the same time incredibly sophisticated, more sophisticated than anything else the Greeks wore for the next thousand plus years. Tower shield faced with oxide, usually no hand grip. Next up is a warrior from the Geometric period, one of the less well understood periods of Greek history. He doesn't wear much gear, and I've based what little he does wear on two bronze figurines from the 8th to 6th centuries BC. Despite the light armor from this period, contemporary art suggests a lot of swordplay, so the fighting might have been quite vicious. Next up is a hoplite from the Archaic period, wears a keton, an ancient Greek tank top, and a very impressive and expensive full suit of armor that would have made him look like a walking statue. I've given him a thrusting spear and a throwing spear, which you'll see in a bit, and hoplites seem to have carried two spears into battle right up until the Persian Wars period, and stopped using throwing spears soon afterward. Next we have a Thespian Hoplite, one of the unsung heroes of Thermopylae, the Thespians being one of the units that volunteered to stay with the Spartans while the rest retreated. Thespians are associated with black cloaks, although there doesn't seem to be any clear evidence of this practice, so no black cloak here. Carries a Boeotian shield with a lunar symbol. And of course we have a Spartan Hoplite, though probably not the kind you expected. Many Spartan hoplites during the Peloponnesian Wars wore little armor, which should make us think hard about how hoplite warfare worked by the late 5th century BC. The Pilos helmet is associated with the Spartans, but there's no clear evidence tying it specifically to Sparta. The Spartan lambda on a shield didn't appear till the Peloponnesian Wars. And I mean, I had to do this, didn't I? Obviously a historical for the Persian Wars, but swap the leather tidy whities for an exomis, and he's basically a Peloponnesian Wars era Spartan hoplite. So maybe not that crazy after all. Next up is a Theban hoplite, sworn enemy of Sparta. His Boeotian helmet is open-faced as well, which suggests Greek warfare was becoming more fluid over time, though he still wears a heavy muscle cuirass. The club blazon on a shield is mentioned by Xenophon, and possibly linked to Heracles. This one is a bit contentious, since the sources aren't that clear on how and how much this troop type was used. He does seem at least to be a bridge between the Hoplite and the later Hellenistic Phalangite, and despite the name, he was definitely a close combat troop type. Next, we have one of Alexander the Great's elite troopers, the Hippospist. Unlike the Phalangites, the Hippospists were equipped like conventional hoplites and did a lot more maneuvering in battle. His helmet is painted red, although the evidence for painting helmets is not entirely clear. His shield is decorated with the eight-pointed star of the Macedonian royal family. And here's a captain of the Silver Shields, another of Alexander's elite units. I couldn't fit an entire pike into the screen here, so I'm drawing an officer instead. The Phrygian helmet he's wearing shouldn't be confused with the Thracian helmet, which usually doesn't have the smurf hat apex or the beard decorations on the cheek pieces. Next up is a Thorakites, a type of trooper that started appearing in the 3rd century, kind of a halfway house between the Phalangite and the light skirmisher. His shield is the Thurios, possibly Celtic in origin, and he sometimes carried javelins as well. And here's another slightly controversial unit, the Silver Shield Imitation Legionary. They're clearly mentioned only once at the Daphne Parade, 
and possibly once in the Book of Maccabees, but that's it. It might not even have been a thing, maybe they were just elite Thoraketae, we just don't know. Next we have a Pontic Archer Spearman. We mostly just kind of assume this troop type existed, but there's not that much evidence for it. Still possible though, given the mixing of Hellenic and Scythian cultures in the Black Sea region. Plus, he just looks way too cool to not exist. And here's a royal guardsman from the woefully underrated Indo-Greek kingdoms. I've based him off a coin of Menander II and a later Gupta period statue. I could have given him a muscle cuirass, but a scale cuirass looks a little bit more exotic. His shield is decorated with Buddhist symbols. This figure is actually based on a specific man, one Marcus Aurelius Alexis, a Spartan soldier in the Roman army. He might have served in one of the enigmatic Spartan cohorts raised by Caracalla, which sound fancy, but were probably just conventional legionary units. Our next figure is in the same vein as the previous one, a so-called Phalangarius serving under Caracalla or Severus Alexander. It's hard to make complete sense of his strange equipment, and most scholars think the Phalangarii were just a conventional legionary unit with a fancy name. Fast forward a few hundred years, and here's a heavy infantry trooper, as described in Emperor Maurice's Strategicon. The high standard of gear that he prescribed was probably not usually followed, but still shows how Romano-Byzantine forces place great importance on heavy infantry formations. And here's our last figure, a cataphract serving under Nikephoros Phokas. Yes, I know he's not an infantryman, but I couldn't resist, since in a weird way, we've gone full circle from the Bronze Age with these living tanks as the kings of the battlefield once again, though of course these guys were mounted. Cataphracts usually wore a padded overcoat on top of their armor, but I spent way too much time on the armor, so sorry historical accuracy, gotta take one for the team this time. And there we have it, the evolution of the Greek heavy trooper from the Bronze Age to Byzantium over the course of some 2500 years. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check us out on Patreon and Redbubble, links below. See you next time.